All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined all the way from Tel Aviv in Israel by Dr. Yaniv Said. How are you doing, Doctor? Hi, John. Thank you very much. It's great uh, to be here. It's a privilege for yeah. me. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, from Tel Aviv, uh, given everything that's going on, we really appreciate you, you, you joining us today. Uh, and you are known in the world to the world as Doctor Persuasion. You're an economist, an attorney, and a business consultant to governments, private firms, public organizations. Uh, you have had 20 years of international success. Author of eleven books, eleven bestseller books. I mean, you know, one book is an achievement. Eleven is is an amazing achievement, including public Thank speaking, you. creative marketing, sales bible. And what we're going to talk about today is how to become the best version of yourself as a sales manager or a salesperson. How you can present yourself in the best way possible, and how you can uh, demonstrate that you're that you're an expert. Um, so getting straight into it, uh, Dr. Yanni, what are what are some of the simple, number one, maybe take a step back. How do you know, taking a look at yourself, if you are putting your best foot forward? Uh, well, my, my definition of an expert is, is very wide, you know, because people always look for expert. I, I will give you an example. If you come to a restaurant and you don't know the restaurant and you sit down, the waitress comes to you, then you ask her, what do you recommend? let's think about it for a minute when you ask her what do you recommend and you don't know her okay and uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe i'm 47 years old she's 21 years old usually i don't uh, consult with 21 years old <laughs> and uh, you, uh, actually she represents the interest of the of the restaurant not me because uh, right. she's going to offer me what the chef told me told her to offer me but yet i ask her uh, what do you recommend and why do i do it because immediately if i don't know anything i would like to shorten to, to shorten my learning curve then i will ask ask an expert because she's considered as an expert because she she knows the restaurant better than i so right. I, I guess everyone uh, that you can hear us is an expert in something and when you want to become a, a better salesperson a better business person then you need to become an expert you need to to know your you know you to to, to have a, a great knowledge professional knowledge but you need to for other people to consider you, you as an expert and that they will know you have this this knowledge so every expert is a student and you need to study all the time but you also need to market your knowledge so people can consider you as an expert yeah and i think that's a that's a great point uh dr yanev i think uh that idea of you can become an expert but you you're a student you always have to be learning because i mean let's face it now i mean you could uh uh, with AI and everything, the world has changed so dramatically that if you're not keeping up on things, you could you'd be a dinosaur in no time. Um, but it's that I guess it's that thing. It's that um, kind of um, intellectual curiosity. Maybe put it that way. If I have the intellectual curiosity to learn about your business, your industry, what's going on, learn about the business of business, that's going to make me a far a far better salesperson than if I just focus on maybe sales techniques. Yeah, and you mentioned AI. So even if in a digital era, and even if in an AI era, uh, there is no replacement yet for for you know for human beings, for the mm -hmm. human touch, for maybe the the emotions in in a sales uh, meeting or sales conversation. And there is the always the secret ingredient of human human people that AI is not yet uh, to mm -hmm. you know to achieve. And uh, I I even in you have Zoom meetings for example, I always prefer one-on-one -on -one, uh, frontal meetings you know not just mm -hmm. by zoom because there is a magic happening in the room so uh, to look inside into people's eyes and you know and to to know about them and to ask them and to really listen to them it's something you can't replace with computer you can mm -hmm. replace it by the way but if you get you want to have maximum uh, con uh, conversion rate then you need to become a a, a frontal or one-on-one -on -one, uh, a salesperson yeah, no, a hundred percent. And and what AI can't do as well is it it can't it, it can't uh, predict the unpredictable, if you like. And uh, yeah, and that's yeah. what we're as humans we're good because we know we're crazy and we don't do things rationally and we don't follow you know particular patterns always. Always. So that's the advantage we have. We know that, so we know how to deal with things out of left field a little bit better. But get, getting back to getting back to okay if i want to set myself up as, as and i want to establish myself as an expert what are some of the other things i need to do in order for you to perceive me as an expert 
Okay, so for people to buy from you or to consider you as an expert, you have four steps. You know, step number four is, is people buy from you. But step number one is to, to, to know you. People need to know you. Now, they, they, you have the, the awareness that, so you need to be everywhere that your clients are, are you know, uh, in their platforms, you know, uh, in, a, in a real reality, when they, uh, when they live, when they go to work, you know, where, when the, where, which newspaper or book they read. And in, on, online, you know, then, then where, which uh, uh, Facebook groups they're in, which, what kind of, what kind of uh, words they write on Google. So you need to be where your clients are. So people will get to know you because the first step for people to consider as an expert is actually to know you, to be in the game. Now, step number two is they need to like you. Need to like you, meaning that they need to to, to have a, 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 some kind of chemistry with you. Now, right. they don't need to actually meet you to do in order to do it. They can meet you on, on Zoom. Uh, they can see you online in the lecture. They can watch a YouTube, uh, you know, a video on YouTube. They can see an, uh, you know, your video on, uh, you know, uh, Instagram or TikTok or something like that. Right. And then they say, well, I, I like this person. So this is step number two. Step number three is they need to trust you. Trust you meaning they need to have, you know, the, the, the professional trust that, okay, this guy is not just nice. He's actually no know, knows what he's talking about. Okay. So uh, how can, how can you de- define, uh, you know, the trust because of social proof? You know, because mm-hmm. I would like to be an expert, so I, I need to show them, you know, some, let's say, uh, uh, objective evidence that I am an expert. Because if I, w- I will say just I'm an expert, you know, I'm very good at what I do, I'm great, I'm a mm-hmm. great guy, uh, people love me, then it doesn't sound objective. It sounds subjective yeah. because I'm talking about myself, you know, so obviously mm-hmm. I'm going to speak highly of myself. But yeah. if I will say, you know, uh, I have a degrees, this and these degrees, or this is some testimonials of uh, my clients, or I work with these and these clients, you know, some celebrities or celebrities in, in this area, uh, or uh, my, my studies, my professional, uh, uh, you know, uh, studies, uh, some uh, uh, volunteer activity that I do. All, all these are kinds of social proof. And then people right. know, okay, he's an expert. You know, I can I not only can like him, but also can trust. So step number one is to know me and awareness. Step number two is to like me, this mm-hmm. personal attention that I, I provide you even even on Zoom or on YouTube. Right. And step number three is the trust. And then step number four is that they will buy from the experts. Yeah. So um, one of the things that you just mentioned there about is, you know, is your credentialing right across all the things that validate you across the platform. So I think sometimes it's really important for you, if you're a salesperson or sales leader or anything, is to do a search on yourself every so often to see what comes up and to make sure that you are happy with the with how because somebody's going to do that search on you um so that you're happy with everything that shows up and if there are things that you're not happy with or the things that you think are decredentialing maybe you need to go and and remove them but i think you have to be in you have to be intentional and you have to be on top of your digital footprint yeah, you have you have actually a, you know a digital identity. You know there is the identity, real identity. There is the digital identity. That mm-hmm. if someone is looking for Doctor Anif Zaid online, what is going to find? And uh, my interest is that the, at least the 10 first results, you know, on Google will be mine. You know, my yeah. blog, my yeah. Facebook, my Instagram, my LinkedIn. So I would like to be in as many platforms as I, as I can be. You know, I, I I believe in you know writing one content and spread it into many sure. platforms. You don't need to write. Uh, different content for each platform and you can write one thing and then post it as post uh, on Facebook and on your uh, business uh, uh, page and on your uh, LinkedIn and on your, you know, if it's a movie, YouTube shorts and TikTok and Instagram, the same movie because some of the people will see you here and here and here but some of them will see you just in one platform. They even don't know you are relevant in, in other other platforms. So you need to be where your, your clients are and you need to, to build your professional identity because if you don't do it, okay, if I know some clients that they tell me, well, I have many customers, I don't need to invest in my, you know, uh, digital yeah. identity. So what, what happens is if I look for them, maybe I will find, you know, some lawsuit that someone, uh, someone, uh, you know, uh, uh, gave them uh, 10 years ago or some, mm-hmm. some blogger wrote uh, something about them, you know, five years ago. So it will appear as the first results about them because of, this is what the, the index of the, of the internet yeah. finds. So I need to, to control to, to uh, you know to control the system to control what people are going to say about me and then mm-hmm. I can uh, if I bring a lot of information to online then this is what people will find so I can control the process and I can have my writing uh, my marketing writing about me uh, all my social proofs for example my resume people will find it at the first results 
Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and the other part, too, is you were talking about uh, the second step is people liking you. And I think the fastest way for people to like you is for you to be your authentic self, because I think sometimes you'll see, I, I, you know, people have got this idea that if you're going to be successful in sales, well, you have to be big and you have to be gregarious and you have to be all. And sometimes people try to adopt that persona, but it's not really them. But some of the best salespeople I've ever come across have been like, quite quiet, quite reserved, but they have a they have a great presence. They're great asking questions. They're great listeners. And you like them because you know you can tell that they're good and that they're they're authentic and they're gonna, you know, really want to get into this. So I think that piece of being yourself is really important. Yeah, authenticity, authenticity is very, very important, you know, to be you to be the best version of yourself, not uh, not to try to duplicate others. It doesn't mm -hmm. work anyway, so so don't even bother trying, you know. But uh, I always tell to people, uh, you know, be a uh, Batman and not Superman. If you want people to to identify with you, then be Batman and not Superman. What mm -hmm. is the difference between Batman and Superman? That they are both superheroes, you know, and mm -hmm. and they are both look 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 they look like human human being, regular human being. But Superman is not a regular human being. He came from another planet. Mm -hmm. So if someone will I will let's say provide a, a workshop how to fly, you know, and I yeah. sit in the front row, you know, and the VIP uh, seats. And they will explain everything. You say you go to the to the to the roof, and then you pick the you know the, you, you see the wind. You pick your first step, something like that. And I will do and I write everything. I will do exactly what he says. I'm going to fall from the from the building because I actually can't fly. But yes. Batman is is a regular person who developed and uh, not regular uh, powers. So he can tell me, well, I'm like you. I'm a regular person. I even you know the Joker killed my parents when I was young, and I was afraid mm -hmm. of uh, of you know the dark and then from bats, and I fell into a cave. And all this story, you know, the Cinderella story. But mm -hmm. then I, I taught, I taught my, myself how to fly. Let me teach you. You can do one, two, three. And then I can teach how to fly if I, I'm willing to put uh, to, to invest the, the time, money, and energy that Batman uh, put. So if you if you like to be to, to be authentic in front of your audience, then don't just tell them about your success. And then uh, you know, this is my my model model girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my, my huge car. You know, we are we're 2024. And, and you know pe people have the, the the fake radar or the bullshit radar they know yeah. when you're authentic and when when you're just trying to duplicate others and and when you're just showing off with your money or something like that so you tell them also about the failures tell them about the lab hours you know not just mm -hmm. the success tell, tell them about your thoughts about you know your, your identity they, they will they would like to get to know you and then again they know you they like you they tr and they trust you because you are human beings like them and then mm -hmm. they are more willing to buy from you yeah, no, absolutely. And and the third one you mentioned, and you mentioned it again, there is the, the trust one. And that's that's the probably one of the most difficult parts because, and I think sometimes, again, if we come back to authenticity, sometimes what I don't like is when I'm on the receiving end is when it's like, I, I ran a sales consultancy some years back and we worked with global companies. But sometimes those companies said, oh, you know, we don't call our salespeople salespeople. We call them something else. And I'd say, that's fine. Whatever you want to call them is fine. But just so as you know, the prospects know that they're a salesperson. So you can call them whatever you want. So for me, I always think the best salesperson I trust, if they embrace being a salesperson to begin with, and, you know, they're not hiding the fact that they're a salesperson, but they are working hard to really understand what you need and to and to really listen. And they, they don't take superficial answers. They don't dive in. They go deeper. And then you build a trust because you think, OK, here's somebody who actually is going through their own process of figuring out where, whether I'm a fit for them as well. Yeah, I teach in my workshops and uh, lectures uh, about soft sale, not uh, hard mm -hmm. sale. So the difference yeah. is that hard sale, you say, well, you should buy now, buy now, buy now. And then immediately, you know, the uh, the client is defending himself. And then mm -hmm. if, uh, soft sale is I'm not selling to you anything. I'm just telling you stories and you buy. OK, so what kind of stories uh, do I tell you? I tell you stories about myself, stories about my, uh, my other clients, stories about, you know, social proof, resume, success, uh, failures, stories about failures, stories about successes. Uh, case studies that I provide to you, uh, you know, articles, everything like that is also social proof. So I tell you lots of stories and then you, you, uh, you know, uh, persuade yourself that you need to buy it. So this is soft sale. And again, I think in 2024, people do things differently. Uh, and also 2025, they use uh, a buy because, you know, the world is changing and people, again, they, they know when you're not attending, they know when you can call yourself whatever you want, but they see, like you said, that you, you, are, you are a salesperson. 
Okay, so bu building on building on the the area of trust, right? Uh, so once you once you get into uh, once you get into this the sales process and you're able to you know get they know you and they like you and you're able to build that first level of trust i mean the most important thing for trust is that you are consistent right and you do what you say you're going to do because i think that's the that's where trust unravels a bit if if suddenly you're very attentive and then suddenly one day you don't reply right for a few days or you don't come back with the answer or whatever but you act kind of out of character with the rest of the experience that's that can be a real red flag when it comes to trust you know yeah this those are the, the small steps small details that provide the bigger uh, results there was a survey uh, in united states that uh, how why why uh, companies choose uh, vendors or how they choose vendors or suppliers so they gave uh, lots of companies five five choices let's say for example i would like a digital expert you know a facebook expert and they gave me five choices uh, five websites of experts and i can uh, put my details and i wait for a response now one month later they came back to all of those companies and they told them okay you start working with someone why did you pick this this vendor and not others you know why this one and not the other four so you might imagine imagine that people will say to you well i got five price quotes and I, uh, you know, uh, uh, talk to, uh, to 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 clients, and I uh, compare the prices, and and I did lots of research. But actually, the the answers were a lot simpler. Uh, the the most the second most common answer was he was the first one to 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 get back to me. You know, uh, I I left uh, five uh, in five websites. I left my call, and the first one who got who got back to me, I, I started working with him because I needed a uh, solution. And the the most common answer, surprisingly, was. He was the only one who got back to me. Right. You know, you know I, I I consult to many companies and to many you know marketing uh, marketing teams and lots of times there are leads you know uh, potential clients that they, they don't get a response because you know there is a system, uh, automatic uh, campaign and the campaign brings leads every day and sometimes this guy is sick and this guy now there is a holiday and now it's uh, you know a weekend and now uh, I am in the bad shape so I didn't do lots of calls and the the leads are starting to to you know to get to the you get higher and higher and mm. uh, sometimes you get back to someone a week after a month after yeah. or not at all you know so the company spent a lot of time uh, about about getting the leads you know from a digital campaign uh, you know something like that and then you don't you don't uh, talk to people uh, on time yeah you know it's in it's in it is incredible doctor because uh Every time you talk to, anytime I talk to other business, you know, people in other businesses as well, it's always the same thing. It's like, oh, you know, we need more leads. It's hard to, you know, find the right prospects. And yet, what you're outlining there, that happens more often than than people realize. I mean, even, you know, think about it. Even in your own life, if you want to, something done at home, and you, you know, you go online and you fill out contact forms or whatever for three or four different service providers, or maybe you call, leave voicemails. Quite often, you know, you will only get one or two of them to call you back, which is incredible, right? You're actually calling, asking, you know, hey, can I, can I potentially give you my business, and you don't even call me back, um, and and I think that so, to your point is, and that's one great takeaway from people out there. Sometimes being there first and fast is better than uh, you know. You may be the greatest salesperson in the world, but you've turned up two weeks later. Uh, you might yeah. have missed the boat. And also, and also, if I'm the only back, the only one who get, get back to you, then the the prices does, doesn't matter, you know, because you don't actually compare prices from f five price quotes, you know, just talking to me. So mm -hmm. I tell you my price, and and you decide if it's good or not. You don't compare it to to other prices. So I can be higher, you know, I can be a, a, a an expert and to charge more, and it's okay, it's okay by the client because I am the only one he, he knows. So this is, by the way, if uh, if we're talking about referrals, we talked about the first steps, you know, uh, know, like, trust, and then buy. So if, for example, you uh, talk about me to your friend, okay, and then you say, well, Dr. Anif Zaid is a great consultant, business consultant, and you tell your friend who has a business, he needs a consultant, you need to talk to Yaniv. And now mm -hmm. he's talking to me, okay? So he doesn't know me, but he knows you, and yep. he likes you, and he trusts you, and he knows you, okay? So when he come, talks to me, he's more willing to buy because... Mm -hmm. The three steps, he didn't, you know, put, uh, uh, went through with me, but he went through with you. So this is why referrals are su su so, you know, such a good tool for, for sales, for increasing your sales uh, capabilities. And also yeah. sales 
Yeah, no, no, absolutely. But again, like you said, I mean, in order to get a referral, you have to be known, liked, you have to be trusted, and that other person has to feel comfortable. So it's worth the investment because you can you can probably often sometimes get your sale without them knowing, liking, and trusting you. You can still probably, if it's something they need and you know it's the right price and all of that, but you're unlikely to get a referral out of that unless you have that relationship. So, you know, that piece is really important. Yeah, we're talking about long-term relationship and uh, you can ask, you can ask for referrals if you have a happy client. So mm -hmm. when, when you finish with the job, you know, you can sell them more, you know, the, the, to move on to the, to the next activity, to, to do upsell, cross-sell, you know, sell them uh, different things that you have and you can ask for referrals and you need to, you know, to use the momentum. Now the client is happy, you finish the job. Now you can ask, you know, I, I always say, not just talk about me or some general, you know, information, but please write free. Please give me free uh, contacts, uh, details of uh, free pe persons. Mm -hmm. And you ask yeah. your clients. So some of them won't give you at all. Some of them will give you maybe one name and some of them will say, okay, write down. And then ta -ta 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 -ta, they will give you 10 names. And then you mm -hmm. have the next uh, leads, you know, uh, for free. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you've done a really good job, they'll actually reach out on your behalf and introduce yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> I, I will ask them, uh, uh, give me the details. I will approach them, but please write them down or an email or text message, or maybe even call them and say, well, I uh, contact you to Dr. Aniv Zaid. He's going to reach you. Uh, I highly recommend uh, Dr. Aniv or something like that. And then, uh, and then you know, the, the conversation, the sales uh, meeting will be much easier. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Dr. Yanev, thank you so much for this. Some great insights. All of the doctor's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Okay, so I provide the business consulting uh, to government uh, officials, to private uh, companies, to uh, high tech companies, startups, uh, lecturers, authors, how uh, everyone who would like to increase their sales uh, to become a better uh, brand or better expert. Uh, to uh, you know, to uh, build a lecture, or build a presentation, maybe to investors, to audience, uh, authors who would like to uh, you know to be to better sell their books. So I help people uh, to achieve more uh, and to earn more money. And you can reach me out at uh, my website. It's uh, drpersuasion.com, or uh, you can call me. Uh, you can send me an email to yaniv at yanivzai.com, and I will be happy to answer any question you may have. Uh, so if you liked some of the ideas I mentioned now, please feel free to, to reach me out. Uh, all my details are on my website and also my email, yaniv at drnivzai.com. And also I have uh, books, like you mentioned at first. So I have now the my new release in the United States and worldwide. It's the 21st Century Sales Bible. So it's now on bookstores and on Amazon and uh, online. So feel free to uh, you know uh, purchase my book. And uh, again, talk to me about any question you may have. Yeah, absolutely. I would encourage you to go check out those books. And uh, thank you again, doctor. And thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much.